let's do something fun. So I saw this on threads, uh, and let's see if it plays again. There it goes. There it oh, it's big. So um, I'll, I'll post the link to this in the, the notes down below. But the question is like, okay, these two balls are bouncing around. What's going to happen if they ever hit? And you're always waiting for them to actually hit. Breaks into a million balls. And I thought, hey, this would be a great thing to model. And, you know, I'm thinking about this as like that one scene from the office where they, they're watching the DVD uh, screen and the, they're waiting for the, the box to hit the corner. Sort of the same thing. And it is kind of cool. Uh, there it goes. A million things. Let's make it, right? What's better to watch this than to make this? So let's make this in vPython from scratch. Okay, so let's go and think about what we're going to do. Because how do you model the collision between a ball and a, and a surface, a circle? Okay, so imagine I have a flat surface and I have a ball coming, ooh, I'm sorry about that, a ball coming down like this, and it bounces off. There are two ways I could model this collision. The first thing would be to say, okay, if my ball gets below uh, y equals zero, then there will be an upwards pushing force uh, that's negative k s y hat. Right, so the further down it goes below the surface, the greater the force. That force is going to change its momentum, and then that's that. Right, it'll bounce up. It's not going to change the momentum in the x direction because the force only pushes in the y direction. And I think that is a that is a fine way to do it. Um, and that was my initial thought. But then I thought I don't actually need to model the collisions if it's perfectly elastic. So suppose I call this. P1, and then it bounces off at P2. In this case, I could say P1 is P1x, P1y, 0. That's the vector. And what I would do is just to take the y component and I just make it negative. Right? If I inverse the value of that, then that flips the y direction and it'll bounce off perfectly. And that would work. Now, what if I have a curved surface? So here's my origin. And let's just say I'm over here. I don't know why I'm picking over there. So what if I want to do the same thing over here? The problem is that this is the direction that the momentum will flip, and that's not the x or the y direction. So if I have a momentum coming in, p, and it leaves p2 like that, I can calculate this vector r. That's going to be the position of the ball. I can calculate that. Now what I want to do is to take the momentum in the direction of r and flip it. So the first, what's the momentum in the r direction? So p r is going to be p1 dot r hat times r hat. Right, p1 dot r hat is going to give the component of this force in the direction of r hat, and then I just multiply by r hat. So if I want to calculate the change in momentum, let's call it dp, all I want to do is to take that y component, cancel it, and then add it again. So this is going to be equal to negative 2 p1 dot r hat r hat. So I can change the momentum of the ball during a collision. I just test if the ball gets to that value of r, flip that, watt, that r component of momentum. And then I would just say p2 is p1 plus dp. And I think that will work. Okay. What about for the rest of the motion? For the rest of the motion, I'll just calculate the gravitational force and then just use the normal uh, momentum update. So I'll say f is mg, where g is the gravitational vector. And that's the change in momentum with respect to time. That's p2 minus p1 over delta t, break it into a short time interval. And then I can find p2. p2 is p1 plus f delta t. And then I can use the same idea to update the position. r2, r1 plus p over m delta t. And that is do it again. 
I keep on doing that, checking each time to see if it collided with the wall, uh, and then updating the momentum based on that thing. And then I'll have two of those and see if they collide. Let's just make two balls and just do gravity, and then we'll add on different pieces. So let's just jump into Python and get started. Okay, I have two constants here, uh, the radius of my circle and g. Vector 0, negative 9.80. Uh, I'm going to need t. I'm going to need the time step. Let's put time step as smaller than I normally do because I want to, you know, really see if they collide. And you know, this can get as small as you want. Now I'm going to make two um, two objects, and I could treat them independently, but I'm going to add them to a list, a list of objects. Oh, well, let me make the ring first. So I'm going to call this circ. It's a it's a circle, which is there's a ring object in vPython, and I'm going to use that. So it has a couple properties. Position is the location of the center. Radius is the radius. And then axis is the vector axis of, of, that it's centered on. So position is vector 0, 0, 0. Uh, radius is equal to r. Axis is going to be, if I want it like this, the axis is the z direction. Axis is vector. 0, 0, 1. Let's run it. So there's my ring. It's too thick. So we can change the thickness of it. Thickness equals 0 0.02. Let's try that. OK. That's good. Now I'm going to make my two spheres. Um, oh, they do need a mass, too. Let's just give it. It doesn't really matter, actually. 0 0.1. Uh, N equals 0 n equals 2. So I want to make a list of two things. So what I'm going to do is to make a loop while n is less than n. And the first thing I want to do is to make a random vector uh, in that circle. And then if once I'd make that random vector, I could put a ball there. Oh, I need a list of balls too. Balls is an empty list. OK, so let's make our random ve vector. It's going to be equal to r times vector 2 times random minus 1, 2 times random minus 1, 0. So random in WebVPython is a function that returns a number between 0 and 1. So 2 times random will give me a number between 2 and 0. And then if I subtract 1, I get between 1 and negative 1. And then I multiply by r. So now this will give me a vector in the square negative r to r. But I want, I want it to be in a circle. So I'm going to throw it away if it's, in, if it's outside of that. So let's do this. If rt mag, mag gives you the magnitude of a vector, is less than r, then I'm going to add a ball to the sphere, a sphere to the balls. So balls equals balls plus sphere, POS equals RT, radius is, let's say, R over 40. Let's just try that. And then I'll count it. N is N plus 1. So if, it's, if I make a vector that's outside of the circle, I just don't even count it. So I, don't, I should only get two balls. Let's just see if this works. There's my two balls. You know, I think in the, in the in the thing, they were smaller. So let's make this 60. Try that. Yeah, that looks, that looks more like what, what they had. You'll notice that every time I run it, they're going to be in different position. OK, so I have my two balls. Now what I want to do is I need to give them an initial momentum. So I can just do 4b in balls. Uh, b dot p is m times vector 0, 0, 0. That's fine. Now I think I can just model, let's just let them fall, no collisions. So while t is less than 1, rate 1,000. So rate in WebVPython says don't do more than 1,000 calculations per second. Uh, so it will run in real time if I have dt of 0.001. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is just to update the momentum of each ball. So 4b in balls. Um, b dot p is b dot p plus m times g oops 
m times g times dt, right? mg is the force, so f dt. Now I'm going to update the position, b dot pos, b dot pos, plus b dot p times dt divided by m, and then I can update time. I only ran it for a second because they're just going to fall right through that circle. There we go. So that's good. Now we can, we can check if there's a collision. So let's do that here. So if, no, should I do that in here? I think I can do it in here. Uh, if mag b.pos is greater than r, then there's a collision. So in that case, I want to flip the momentum in the r direction. So let's calculate dp negative 2 times, what did I say? Times dot product of b dot p b mag norm. Norm b dot pos. So b dot pos is r, right? That's the vector position of that ball. Norm returns a unit vector. And then I want to multiply this by norm b dot p, os. Yeah. And then I'm going to add that to my momentum. So b dot p equals b dot p plus dp. I think this will work. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha. Check that out. OK. So let's run this for 10 seconds. I have not said make a million balls, right? I mean, that's cool of its own. OK, now we need to check for collisions. So I have just two balls in my list, ball 0 and ball 1. So let's check for a collision right here. Uh, I'm going to say R01 is going to be balls. 1.pos minus balls 0.pos, right? That's my vector from one ball to the other. So they're going to collide. I'm not going to say 0 because we're not going to actually get there. So let's say if uh, mag r01 is less than some number, 0 0.0. .0 one. Let's just do that. We can always make it smaller for a more accurate collision. Uh, if that's true, then what I want to do is to make a whole bunch more balls. So if that's true, up here what I'm going to do is set n equal to 0, and then I can, I can do another loop just like it did up here. So if that's true, then uh, while n, n is less than, let's do 100 balls. I'm scared to do more than that. Uh, this is going to do the exact same thing, right? I'm just going to make 100 random balls. So I'm going to do the same thing. And everything got messed up. So let's let's do uh, that should go right there. That should go. Uh, let's see. This is right here. This is right here. This is right here. Now the other thing I want to do is to add in here uh, an initial momentum. I didn't do that before, so I can just put here p equals vector zero zero zero. Okay. I think that should work. So let's just see if I run this, if this will work. OK, I'm kind of scared, but let's just run. I should save it, shouldn't I? And that's just 100 balls. And they may not collide, right? I may just have to wait. Let's, let's just let's increase our value of uh, the collision option so I make sure that it collides. And then we can move it back down. So if it's less than 0.1, they should be able to collide now. Oh, they started really low. Oh, there we go. 100 balls works. OK, let's try 1,000. And then we'll move if that works. I'm not going to do a million because I'm not crazy. You can try to do a million. OK, that is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with this. OK, let's put this back to uh, 0, 1, which I think is still kind of large. Uh, and then I can run this for as long as I want. Let's run it for 30 seconds. And I'm not going to run it the whole time. Uh, one of the things I was thinking about as I was running this 
is that maybe we should start the ball somewhere up here. So, so if they're less than, uh, if y is negative, then don't, don't draw it. And then you get two balls up here, just to be cooler. But you know, you, I'll give you the link to this code. You can play around with the code yourself um, and make cool things. Uh, but it's kind of fun to make it yourself, I think, and I really enjoy doing that. I'm really, I'm really impressed the way it turned out. Uh, also, remember, this is in 3D, so that's kind of cool, too. So, Okay, that's that. Hope you enjoyed that. I had fun. I'll talk to you later. Code down below. Link to the original video from Instagram, if I can find it. I'll put that down below, too.